Hey yo, what's up guys, John Bogle here. Today we got the Crazed Lizard Redux Guide. Now there's a lot to explain here, so I'm just gonna hop in right away. So this is just an example lineup. First, I'm just gonna explain what units you might want to bring in this stage, what core units you really want, and what other units that could help out. So part of your lineup will be split into three major sections here. Of course, the first one being your meat shields or your stallers. The second being your units that are specifically there to counter the crazed lizards. So that could be your tankers or your extreme long range units. Some rushers can fit into this category as well. And the last portion of your lineup and probably the most important is the attackers for the autos in the stage. Let's first get this out of the way. Your meat shields or stallers, all you really need is two and that is crazed wall and regular wall cat. The racer helps tremendously, so if you do have that, you're good to go. Now you won't need any true forms at all, but I do recommend to get your units to that level 25 mark at the least, unless you're using the help of Ubers and stuff. This is pretty much the same thing as the old guide. The old guide used true forms, but it was still possible without true forms. But most people tend to click on the video, they see true forms in the lineup, they start crying mad when it's still very possible to do the exact same strategy but with just no true forms. So now let's talk about the second most important part of the lineup which is the crazed lizard counters. Now the main one here being crazed whale, the most accessible unit and the most slot in powerful early game unit you can get for this stage without needing any true forms or anything Crazed Whale is truly the GOAT for the beginner phase, and it will tremendously help in this stage. It could tank multiple hits from the Crazed Dragons even when stacked up. It could do great amounts of damage against the Crazed Dragons as well, so Crazed Whale, perfect option. And in this example here, we're using Wrestling Cat, but you don't need Wrestling Cat. You can use a level 25 Titan Cat but you'll need some combos, like a defense up combo. We'll hop into that later in the strategy explanation. But for now, just have at least two tankers, whether that be Crazed Whale and Jamera, Crazed Whale and a level 25 Titan, Crazed Whale and Kai. The definition of a tanker is basically units with high health and low knockbacks. That is what you want to aim for. Craze Titan also will destroy the stage. So if you have Craze Titan, you can definitely use that. But there is some anomalies that could work in this slot, which is Hacker Cat. Units like Hacker or the True Form Cyberpunk will destroy the stage because it could sit at a safe distance and constantly chip down the stack of Craze Lizards. Once again, units that are rushers can also work in this slot. So a Bahamut or Swimmer can even work. So just make sure you have at least two of those types of units. At the very least, I recommend bringing one tanker and let's say if you have like a Luga that could outrange the Crazed Lizards, then you could bring that as the second option or maybe you want to use a Rusher, then you could use that as well. Or if you have extra space in your lineup, then you could probably add even more tanks. But I'll warn you here and I'll warn you again in the future for this level, cash management is a huge huge part of this level. If you don't manage your cash correctly, you're going to get run over. So do keep that at the back of your mind when constructing your lineups. You will not have the luxury to just constantly be sending out your tankers after every single wipe of the autos. That's why Crazed Whale is so great for the stage because it is low cost, it has high health, it has good damage output as well, and it has a decent recharge rate as well. It's just an all around unit. Only unfortunate thing being it's not area attack but it still works very well. So when paired with like Hacker Cat or Kai or maybe you're using Jamera or Wrestling Cat, Crazy Whale will do work. Now this is the most important part of the lineup, your auto counters. The autos are the real problem in this stage. Every single wave of the autos will decide your fate for the rest of the battle. So you want to be prepared for every single auto wave. So for one, you don't run out of cash. Two, you efficiently take out the autos and not waste too much time on one auto wave until the next one comes. And three, tying those two points together, having enough range so they don't just get brutalized by Crazy Lizard. Now there's a lot of units that can work in this slot. There's just a whole bunch of general attackers such as 
Paris, Ice Skating Cat, Castaway, Ring Girl, Pizza, Crazy UFO, Volter Cat. But there's two elite choices here, and that is Crazed UFO and Cameraman. If you don't have Cameraman, Murcat's true form, Crazy UFO is the absolute second best option. But don't stress, if you don't have Crazy UFO, then you can use a combination of other attackers, stuff like Paris, Drama Cats or Figure Skating Cats, Castaway Cat, Vulture Cat, Ring Girl Cat. Basically, a general ranged AoE area of effect attacker. There is some wild cards in there, stuff like Can Can or Dancing Flashers slash Hip Hop Cat's True Form can work tremendously well against the Audas and the Crazed Lizards. Stuff like Crazed Gross can work tremendous against the Audas and chip down Crazed Lizard in the process as well. Worst comes to worst, you can use single target units like Dragon Cat, so you can just stack up a bunch of dragons and hope to snipe out all of the Audas. But I would only recommend that if you have a supporting AoE attacker with Dragon so you don't land all of your hits on the peons. So with level 25 units, I found that having three AoE attackers for the autos is the sweet spot. You could bring four just in case if you want to feel safer. Stuff like Ring Girl can actually tank hits from Crazed Lizard and can actually land hits on the Crazed Lizard stack. So that is tremendously helpful. And let's say you want to bring a different emergency AoE attacker, Castaway can work in that role as well, having great survivability and a decent DPS. But once again, I'm going to warn you here, don't overload on too many things because it is real easy to just start spamming all of your attackers when you start panicking and all of a sudden you're out of cash. At the most, you'll only need three attackers. That's it. Maybe even two or maybe even one if you're using Cameraman. I'll explain the cash management a lot more in depth when we hop into the actual strategy explanation. But for now, just keep in mind, if you do have a very expensive lineup, you're going to have to manage your cash even more strictly. And I think that about summarizes the general lineup points. For Ubers, pretty much anything with high health and decent range works in this stage. The Epic Fest Ubers completely destroy the stage. Balrog completely destroys the stage. Tankers like Kai completely destroys the stage. Cheap, spammable Ubers like Jizo and stuff works tremendously well. And those long, long range units like the Lugas can work well as well if they do outrange the Crazed Lizard. You can utilize long range units like Aphrodite as well, but it's very risky because you're gonna have to use the Autos as a leverage to make sure Aphrodite doesn't just get sniped by Crazed Lizards over and over again. The combos I recommend for this stage is defense up for sure. Stack up on those defense up combos. And if you are really, really perfect on your cat levels, maybe you do have some true forms, then you can go with attack up or research up or even unit speed up to get your tankers in there faster. But the general choice here is defense up combos. Now you don't need any power ups for the stage. If you do want to bring sniper it can help a little bit but it's not needed at all. In the beginning here you're going to get rushed by some mots. You can easily just handle them with spamming Paris. Then they'll just all die with just protection by walls. Or if you do have the help of swimmer that could help you get some extra time save. Now as soon as the crazy lizards pop out that's when you start setting up your cycles. Now this is the most important thing in the level. Not the crazy lizard, not the peons, well it kind of is the peons but the main issue is the autos. You want to track that cycle at all times and the cycle is in a one minute interval around there. So as soon as you see the auto wave coming that's when you want to start that one minute interval in your head. The reason this is so important is because you need to set up your tankers for when you have a clear path to the crazy lizards to just lay out as much damage as possible. Another important thing to track throughout this level is the Otta's health. Now it might be extremely difficult for a newer Battle Cats player to try and track an enemy unit's health, like that concept itself might just sound completely insane but it's actually a very 
very huge part and key component to getting your cycles on the crazed lizard correctly. Now this whole part is going to be completely irrelevant if you're using units that are sitting at a safe distance from crazed lizard and is getting nice chip damage. So stuff like hacker, but if you're using the tanker cycle strat, so units that will have to go up into close range with crazed lizard and get open windows to where all of those units can land hits on crazy lizard without getting interrupted by peons or the autos. Tracking the autos health is crucial because you do not want to waste any time in between when the autos are dead and the next wave of autos is on the interval. Now I've been playing battle cats for years and years and years so it's at the point to where I kind of just have this muscle memory but to go into specifics this is how you could actually track when your autos are about to die in the level. So it all depends on what attackers you're using and what levels you got, but you could use sites like My Gamatoto to figure out the stats for all of your units and stuff. Then you could come back in this level and test it out for yourself. So in this lineup, we're using Ring Girl Cat, Crazy UFO, and Paris as our main attackers. So when the wave of autos arrive, I always make sure to have at least one Ring Girl Cat there and I always make sure to have Paris to clean up any of the other peons. And the main unit that does damage to the autos the most is Crazed UFO, of course. All you really need to do is not be exactly on point, but just make a rough calculation in your head, or you could just do it plain out. Add up the unit's DPS. So all of your attackers' DPS, the amount of units that you have on field, and the amount of time that it takes to kill the autos. Once you have that, after a couple auto waves, you'll start to realize a pattern. And if you could start using that and start abusing it to get your tankers out as quick as possible, you'll be able to get whole efficient cycles on the crazed lizards with no autos in the way. And the best way to do this is, of course, is to just do a rough calculation of your DPS. So most of the time throughout this gameplay, I either have one Ring Girl Cat there and two Crazy UFOs and one Paris. Now, if you don't want to calculate it out, you can just do a test wave and just send out a minimal amount of attackers and gradually add on by sending one more attacker and just see how long it takes to actually take out the auto waves and keep that in mind and see how much units you had on field, what attackers you had on field, and if you just repeat that over and over again, you'll be able to abuse that pattern. Now the whole purpose of this is so as soon as those autos die, your attackers for the crazed lizard, so your tankers or your rushers, are already up there, not interrupted by the autos, but are perfectly in cycle to get as much damage as possible before the next wave of autos arrive. Because without that, if you just sent out, let's say you killed all of the autos right here, and as soon as you kill the autos, maybe you send out your attackers, your tankers, after you kill the autos. That can work in some cases, like in this example being this close to the base. As soon as you kill the autos, you can pretty much send out your tankers right after because you're so close to the base they'll be able to walk up and reach the crazy lizards in no time. But when this proves extremely helpful is when you're far away from the base. You don't have time to just send your tankers right after you kill the autos because by the time your tankers then reach the crazy lizards the next auto wave is already going to be here and it's going to interrupt your free damage window. So that is where predicting when the autos will die or getting a rough calculation of when the autos are about to die, then sending out your tankers before the autos actually do die, but just in time so when your tankers reach the autos, they're not getting hit by the autos, but as soon as they go up to the autos, the autos are dead and out the way, and they can just move into Crazy Lizard and start smacking away. If that doesn't make sense, I'll break it down right here. So, this auto wave just arrived. We have two crazy UFOs on the field and two Paris Cats on the field. 
and the one ring girl cat. The goal here is to efficiently take out the autos as quick as possible by spending as little cash as possible so it gives your tankers a clear path to get multiple hits and free hits on crazed lizard. So as you can see we have our tankers out already before the autos are dead. There's one auto left and that auto is right about to die. When you're this far from the base, every second wasted counts a lot because that is counted for the next interval of autos. If your tankers don't get up there in time, that means they're gonna get interrupted by the next auto wave. So whether you do a rough calculation of the amount of DPS or amount of time it takes to kill the autos, or you just feel it out by timing a few auto waves and maybe you get the perfect cycle down by just improvising. The thing is, you want your tankers up there as fast as possible, but not too fast that they're taking hits from the autos and not too slow that the autos waves is interrupting your tankers from getting hits on Crazy Lizard. So let's watch this gameplay back again. So as always, I always start with one ring girl and two crazy UFOs. And in this example, we did just a bit more Paris Cats, so we were off just a bit, but you don't have to be exactly on point. As you can see, our tankers are up there, and this is crucial because we are getting multiple hits with our rushers and our tankers before these autos come. Now, it might take a long time to try to figure out what the perfect cycle is. It might just be a form of muscle memory or extreme timing for cycles, or it is just raw calculation. If you could just calculate how much DPS you're doing compared to the auto's health, you might be able to get a rough time estimate of when the autos will die and when they'll have the perfect window to get multiple hits on Crazy Lizard without any interruptions. Also, it's a huge thing to always clear the peons with the cat cannon when you're pushing with your tankers, but that should be obvious at this point. Now once again, this whole explanation for tracking the Otis health is going to be completely useless if you're using Hacker Cat or just overwhelming powerful units that won't have to worry about any cycles at all. But in this case, we're using very low level cats, so every second counts, every hit counts, even though our Titan can only get one hit off on the Crazy Lizard. That one hit is so important. You can also apply the Manic King Dragon strategy here as well by utilizing, of course, stuff like Hacker Cat or Cyberpunk, Can Can, stuff like that. You can cheese the stage by bringing Rusher units, a Bahamut, Crazed Giraffe. True Forms does completely overwhelm the stage, so don't stress out too much about the technicalities of the stage when trying to attempt it with lower level units. If you don't want to go through the trouble of trying to track cycles and all that, just get your units to level 30 and you'll be fine. Like in this example, we're only using one true form and it's a free to play true form unit here, which is Wrestling Cat. It doesn't have that crazy stats or anything at all, but just having that true form tremendously changes the whole scope of the level. Like, you don't have to be so strict on timing your cycles because Wrestling Cat can just tank through so much more. Compared to the previous lineup where we used the exact same strategy, we had to keep track of every cycle and do the maximum efficiency because the Titan Cat I had is level 25 and it could only get one hit off before dying. So it is so crucial in that example to get the maximum efficiency, the maximum hits and the maximum time save. In this case, it doesn't really matter because we're using True Form, Wrestling Cat. And the same thing applies if you're using like Praise Titan, Jamera Cat, Hacker, etc. But that about does it for the Craze Lizard Redux guide. It was a much deeper look into the strategy I explained in the old guide. It's pretty much the same thing, but in the old guide, the quality was scuffed and I didn't really explain too much in detail what I meant. So here it is all explained and there's a bunch of replacements here mentioned as well. And it's to show that, hey, you don't need true forms even though it shows true forms in the lineup. But yeah, drop a like if this guide helped you out. Of course, subscribe if you're new, join the hashtag Boogle Gang. Link to join the Discord is in the description down below as well. 
That's it. It's been John Bugle, and see ya.